What has been the secret to your longevity? The secret to my longevity, I think, is the fact that I'm a perfectionist, you know, and I listen to everybody's shit, you know. I mean, even R&B, <clears throat> I listen to classical music sometimes, I listen to heavy metal, I just listen to everything, you know, and really I listen to, to the whack shit more, you know, because I want to know what not to do. You know, the stuff that's not selling, you know. Um, it's easy to pick up a hit record <laughs> and know what people are buying, you know. Um, I think I'm very blessed, you know. If there was somebody that was struck by luck, by God, I'm one of those people. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Hip Hop Biographies. And on this channel, we cover hip hop legends, figures, and forgotten moments in hip hop. Today, we're going to be discussing Dr. Dre. Andre Romel Young, better known as Dr. Dre, was born on February 18th, 1965 in Compton, California, just a few months before the Watts riots that lasted for six days in which 34 people were killed and $40 million worth of damage occurred. Growing up, Dr. Dre bloodline already consisted of musical talent, such as his mother, who was a singer, and his father, who was a part of an R&B group called the Rommels. Hence how Dr. Dre got his middle name. Dr. Dre's parents would separate from each other in 1968, in which his mother would remarry, and this marriage would make Dr. Dre and the G-Funk rapper, Warren G, stepbrothers. In the mid-1970s, Dr. Dre would start to attend Vanguard Junior High School in a notorious come to California, but would transfer schools shortly after to escape the gang and drug culture that played the school. Dr. Dre would transfer to Centennial High School. While attending Centennial High School, Dr. Dre would be more focused on partying during this time than his grades. Dr. Dre would transfer again to Vanderbilt High School to try and improve his grades, but Still, Dr. Dre wasn't focused on his academics. Instead, Dr. Dre was focused on music and partying. He would party so hard that he would father a child at the age of 16, but we'll only find out about the child 20 years later. Dr. Dre's love for music would come from when he heard the Wheels of Steel, The Adventures of Grandmaster Flash. Dr. Dre recalled after hearing that song, he wanted to know what hip hop was. He immediately went home and called his friends they began to take apart one of their parents' stereos. They began playing with the balance button, which they eventually learned to mix with it, and the rest was history. Dr. Dre's mother would buy him a new Mark mixer for Christmas. He recalled that this Christmas present made his DJ experience much easier, even though he still had raggedy turntables. Dr. Dre would continue through high school, focusing on DJing. Little known fact about Dr. Dre, he was a diver on the school's swim team, but who almost lose his spot because of his grades. Dr. Dre would begin to attend a club called Eve After Dark. After becoming a regular at the club, Dr. Dre would become the main DJ at the club, performing under the name Dr. J, after his favorite basketball player, Julius Dr. J Irvin. While working at the club, Dr. Dre would join a group called the World Class Wrecking Crew. This crew consisted of Dr. Dre and future NWA member DJ Yellow. Also, Alonzo Williams, the owner of the club that Dr. Dre began DJing in, remember him. The World Class Wrecking Crew were a disco electric funk type of brand. They had a lot of success with hits like Surgery and Slice. There was also an opening for New Edition. They wore bright colored glittery and leather suits, which Dr. Dre had a problem with. Not only did Dr. Dre not agree with the fashion choices of the group, he would also not enjoy that style of music and wanted more creative control over the music he was making. Able speakers and a mixer will rock your party wherever you be. Calling Dr. Dre to surgery. <laughs> Before that, while trying to pave his way through the music industry, Dr. Dre will be arrested but not for defending his brother like in the N.W.A. movie, but instead for unpaid parking tickets. Dr. Dre apparently racked up thousands of dollars in parking tickets in his Mazda RX-7. While in jail, he would call Alonzo Williams, the club owner, for help, but Alonzo wouldn't be able to help him out this time. So Dr. Dre instead called a friend and a local neighborhood drug dealer called Eric Wright, better known as Easy e After Easy e came to the rescue, after being bailed out, Dr. Dre and Eazy-E got together to work on music together. 
as a form of repayment for posting his bail. While working closely together with Easy e on a new song, the world-class working crew would have a problem with this, but this would prompt Dr. Dre to go ahead and lead the group. But this would turn out to be one of the best decisions Dr. Dre could have made at the time, because the song they were working on together would later come out to be Boys in the Hood, Easy e and N.W.A. breakout single, making the rest history. Dr. Dre and Easy e would go on to found the group N.W.A., along with other members such as DJ Yella and Ice Cube. Dr. Dre New Group will go on to have major success with their first album, Straight Outta Compton, released. Dr. Dre will complete one more album with N.W.A. before departing with them also. Dr. Dre reasoning for leaving N.W.A. was because of the group's manager, Jerry Heller, who was focused more on taking better care of Easy e and not the other members of the group. This unfair treatment divided the group apart, not because of Easy e but because of one member who was being paid and taken care of better than other members of the group. And at the end of the day, people got to eat. Jerry Heller would later admit to treating Easy e better than other members because Easy e was business focused, while the other members were focused on music, the exact thing they were being paid to do. Dr. Dre would end up having a hard time leaving Ruthless Records, but eventually would be free from his contract with the help of Suge Knight and his shrewd godfather-like negotiating techniques. Going into the 90s, Dr. Dre would find major solo success in the 1990s after signing with Suge Knight to Death Row in 1991. Dr. Dre would release a new single called Deep Cover with an up-and-coming Long Beach artist by the name of Snoop Dogg. And after releasing this new single, Dr. Dre will begin working on his debut solo album. And on December 15, 1992, Dr. Dre will release The Chronic, shooting him into mainstream success. The Chronic, an album named after marijuana, will peak at number three on the Billboard Top 200. And three of his singles from his album will make it in the top 10. Dr. Dre now will not be just known as a producer, but also a rapper. But this will only be the start for Dr. Dre's career. He will go on to find many more rap superstars, such as Snoop Dogg, Eminem, and 50 Cent. We'll also find a globally successful headphone company called Beats. But that's all for a part two. Please like and subscribe if you learned anything. And also leave a comment. What's your favorite Dr. Dre song? Or what's your favorite Dr. Dre fact? And I'll catch you on the next one.